So we covered the first eight miles in part one. Now we're gonna take our first views of a section of the race that is both beautiful and brutal. And so you're coming up that long, slow climb, you make a few turns, you come around the corner here, and then you see Hurricane Point. So that's really the climb. The first thing I notice when I look up at the hill is not so much how high it is or whatever, but is the, the hundreds of runners that are lining that course up there. So part of my thinking is, oh my God, those people are all the way up there and I'm back down here and haven't even started the run yet. To make matters worse, we need to drop to one of the lowest points in the course before we begin the climb. Now this is just a U-turn right here. So the marathon comes down the hill here. You have a terrific crowd from the uh, relay runners, loops around this turn, and then back up here we have the Tycho drummers. And they're sitting there just beating on those drums. It just echoes inside this sort of canyon here. And you hear them going all the way up around the corner. So uh, mile number 10 is just after we get around the turn. And mile 12 is gonna be at the very top at Hurricane Point. So we've got two miles to climb 700 feet. One of the things that runners will enjoy is that every couple hundred yards, there'll be a, a sign on the road which will have another saying. So a lot of people have different styles. Some people will just aggressively go in and hit the mountain. Other people will uh, do walk runs. That's a good technique to use, but to certainly shorten your stride down. The fact that it's not straight, that it curves, is something that I really enjoy because uh, I think it would be pretty discouraging if you could actually see two miles uh, straight stretch up for the climb. One of the things that can really help is looking around, looking out at the ocean, looking at the views every time we come around a turn here. Every time we pass one of these little draws, you'll see a little redwood groves. Every time you come around a corner, you think you're at the top, but this road likes to fool you. Coming around that last turn that we just did is the biggest fall summit. That is the one that I'm even convinced on most years that has to be the top. But no, it isn't the top yet. You have another half mile to go. So your best measure of knowing the top is it's mile 12. You've got to run two miles a hill before you get to the summit. If only we could run the hill at this speed and get it over with. We are at Hurricane Point right now, which is uh, about mile 12 of the marathon. And from here, we're gonna go run down the hill, one mile descent, down to the Bixby Bridge. And usually from here, if the wind isn't too strong, is where we hear the music from the piano, the grand piano down at the bridge. I mean, it really is the high point of the whole marathon. It's, it's elation. It gets fairly quiet as we're coming up the grade, up to Hurricane Point. But as soon as you come around the corner here and you start heading down again, the chatter among the runners, the enthusiasm lifts again, and we're heading down to the halfway point. There's a reason why this is named Hurricane Point, and that's because we have incredible winds. On, on occasion, this happened a few of the years, we'll have 30 to 40 mile an hour winds. And my advice on the windy years, find a big person and draft him, run behind him. One year we had hail, and following that hail we had the most incredible uh, rainbows. Uh, we had this rainbow that was spread right up over Hurricane Point, and that was probably, I think, the most beautiful sight I've ever seen. One thing I didn't mention is as we get to the top of uh, Hurricane Point, uh, Big Sur has put signs up there to remind you to look back at where you've been. But now, back to where we're going, a welcome downhill stretch. It's one mile from Hurricane down to the Bixby Bridge. So from mile 12 down to mile 13. And so we're dropping over 500 feet um, in that mile. So that's about a 10% grade. So this is a substantial downhill. And this, I believe, is where most runners on the Big Sur course will uh, injure themselves because they'll run too fast. So now we're coming up on the Bixby Bridge, and I don't think there's a more dramatic halfway point on a marathon than this particular bridge. Actually, 13.1 miles is precisely the center of that bridge, and it is exciting. It is such a thrill, because what's happened here is we've climbed to the highest point of the course, which is up above here, Hurricane Point, 700 feet, and we've then done this nice descent all the way down here to the Bixby Bridge. 
Now right behind me here in this little parking lot next to the bridge, we have a grand piano. Now on the years when there's no wind, that happens every once in a while, you can actually hear the grand piano from the top of Hurricane Point. And I tell you, the hairs are standing up on your arm. It's just absolutely incredible to hear that music and to see this view that you see below us right here. The beautiful views continue as we head out towards Palo Colorado Canyon and Mile 15. And this is a view where we can see all the way up along the coastline. And so Palo Colorado Canyon has just passed us here. The road goes on up and then it goes past, uh, past Girpada. We call it running on the ragged edge of the western world for a reason, because the mountains come straight down to the ocean here. My number one piece of advice in running this marathon, bring a camera. The point of bringing a camera is that if you've got one with you, you're going to be looking at these vistas with a little different eye. And I think it's sort of a constant reminder to enjoy the course, to have a good time running this marathon, that you're not just head down running 26 miles. You're out here for an experience. Moving along through Palo Colorado Canyon, Rocky Point, and Garpada, we've got plenty of rolling elevation changes. Hopefully, the views will keep your mind off the pain. Well, this cove is one of the excellent examples of what we see on the coast here. You look at the cove, you see the water, the waves, the color of the water is just spectacular. So one day a year, we can hear the ocean, we can hear the sea lions bark at the beach. It's just a fantastic experience. Check out part three of the Big Sur Marathon Tour, windward towards the wall and through the highlands to home.